，各位家長，各位同學 ，Professor Chan， 謝，大家好，歡迎大家嚟臨由香港大學新聞及傳媒研究中心 GMC 所舉辦嘅新聞系課程簡介會。我係陳朗怡 Stephanie， 就讀港大新聞系 U2， 係今日嘅司儀。相信各位同學都想對港大獨一無二嘅新聞系課程認識更多，希望透過今日嘅活動，可以令大家更瞭解我哋嘅課程，做好入學嘅準備。港大新聞系係一個可以同時間擁有兩個主修嘅學位課程，而數碼化就係其中一樣我哋非常之著重嘅元素。喺 GMS 嘅課程入面，你將會有機會學到唔同種類嘅新聞、新聞傳播技巧，同埋認識到唔同嘅媒體。而你嘅第二主修都非常之廣泛，包括社會學、商業、經濟、政治同埋文學院等課程。與此同時，你亦都有機會同來自世界各地嘅學生一齊上堂。根據以往嘅經驗，國際新大概佔新聞系課程學生嘅一半，而佢哋包括中國內地、台灣、孟加拉、印度、日本、韓國、澳洲、紐西蘭、德國、俄羅斯同埋英美等地。最重要嘅係，你喺 JMS 所學到嘅嘢，都係僱主渴望一位專業新聞工作者所需要同埋具備嘅條件。喺就業嘅方面，我哋畢業生嘅出路都唔止局限於本地同埋國際嘅媒體機構。就包括咗銀行業、政府、公關工作同埋法律等範疇。喺今日嘅講座，我哋會先由 GMC 總監總總監為大家介紹一下我哋嘅課程，之後會有一段現場嘅新聞直播示範。當然唔少得嘅就會講到大家最著重嘅收生要求啦。同時，我哋亦都會邀請到我哋新聞系嘅畢業生分享佢哋嘅經驗。最後亦都會有答問嘅環節，解答大家嘅疑問。事不宜遲，我哋有請我哋 GMS 嘅總監 Professor Chan 去大家介紹我哋嘅課程。有請 Professor Chan。Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome.、Uh, my name is Jin Chan. I'm the founder、uh, of the GMS, and、um, I I just before I say anything,、uh, I just want to ask, who are the parents here? We have parents. Oh, parents. Oh, we have a good number of parents. Got a few parents, right? Hey, uh, there's a few little kids who are studying three years, but they have to go to Canada. Very smart. Uh, so thank you very much, parents. Because I think you can relate to your children or your parents here. You can relate to 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 your parents here. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'll switch, right? So I'll do both, right? And I just want to congratulate your parents because you are here、uh, by yourself of your parents because you're visionary. You understand you know, the importance of media and journalism. You know, it's a whole digital tool. God help you. From the demonstrations, you will see that we produce and train students who. Not only can work in journalism or the media, they are prepared for every job, every career in this world, and I'm not exaggerating. 我即係話讀新聞咧，唔係淨係喺準備佢哋喺新聞界度做嘢。其實佢哋係十八般武藝，樣樣都做得啊！唔好講銀行，唔好講政府樣嘢，因為喺呢個世界咧，如果你中英文又叻，誒，你又曉諗嘢，你係 take。Right,、uh, you understand the world, right? Because you're very Western, ah, always looking for news. Ah, not only in Hong Kong, these news are all over the world. The whole world is happening. What is going on? Then you are prepared, right, to take on any jobs, to take on any challenges, right? And you're desired by employers, right? Ah, for example, today the biggest news is what? The whole world. May I ask everybody? Exactly. The Grand meeting in Singapore, right? And we need to understand it, even if you're working as a journalist or, or not, right? You may buy stocks, whether they, uh, whether they or you want to buy flex, right? Are prices going up or down? You need to understand, right? The world situation, the politics, right? So um, I'm being very brief, but I'll be here to answer questions in the later in the session. Or afterwards, okay? 
and uh, I want to hand over my time to the students uh, because they really the, the core and the pride of our program. Thank you. Welcome to the JMSC Live News Broadcast Program. My name is Fei Wai, and this is my co-host Justin Tong. 唔該曬飛,歡迎各位收睇JMSC現場新聞報導,我係Justin you're interested in global views from an Asian angle, then this place is for you. And we have a winning formula with our graduates consistently being employed at local and international media. At the JMSC, our students are encouraged to go beyond the classroom. For example, the JMSC is equipped with cutting-edge technology for students to get real practice with professional-level equipment. Isabel Wong has more. Hi everyone, I'm Isabel Wong. I'm a third-year student at the JMSC. And currently I'm standing outside Elliot Shore. The past few years have been filled with excitement and activity, and I've recently begun working as a freelancer at Boomberg TV thanks to the guidance of our professors and hands-on work at the JMSC. Highlights include filming the action at the Occupy Central movement last year and working on my own ideas on online feature story about mental health. Here at the JMSC, we have access to the latest technology from our equipment office some of which I would like to use now to show you our feast for home on campus, historic Elliot Shore, where professors taking teams out to practice piloting the JMSC drone, the latest must-have for professional reporters. This looks like serious fun, and believe me, it is, but such technology comes with responsibility. Our research team at the JMSC has recently completed a law paper into international and local drone use laws. So as well as the latest equipment and ideas, we are given a world-class standard in how to report professionally. Back to you at the studio. Isabel,同我地分享佢在JMSC读书所学到的东西 as well as practical fun here in Hong Kong, the JMSC encourages students to think globally through our exchange partnerships. This is very popular with students who can apply for semester or year-long programs at prestigious journalism schools. And that is on top of the separate HKU programs where students can apply for exchange opportunities at more than 100 other universities around the world. 除了港大提供全球超過100間學校作交流計劃之外,我們JMSC也有自己的交流計劃,為期一個學期或者一年。每年都有不少同學申請這個計劃,體驗下去世界各地頂級新聞學院交流添。事不宜遲,我們現在用
from all over the world here. But I have to say, in just a year at the JMSC, I've kept myself quite busy. It began with working on live verified updates, a Facebook page set up by JMSC students in our student lounge during Occupy Central, and we received more than 100,000 likes. But the highlight for me was the summer break, when I became one of the starting reporters for Hong Kong Free Press, a new independent, crowd-funded English language online news website. During my three-month internship, I have written more than 100 articles for the company. The articles I have written included the Tianjin Explosion, July 1st demonstration, and the upcoming District Council elections. It was an amazing journey, as I was able to gain hands-on experiences in the newsroom and build up my professional network. I'll leave you now with a story about the life of a transgender refugee in Denmark. These refugees will have to wait for a long time before they know whether their application is accepted by the Danish authorities, and we examined what life is like for them in the country. I hope you'll like my short report. So thanks very much, and I'll see you all when I'm back to Hong Kong next year. Oh, I think so. I'm comfortable with my skin, even with the hair, and I'm very comfortable. And I'm proud of my breasts, because they're natural. 45-year-old Ali is currently staying in a refugee camp near Roskill. She fled Pakistan in 2012, after she had been discriminated because of her sexual identity. I remember when I was a child, I did not feel that I'm, uh, I'm a boy, I felt I'm a girl. It's not just feeling, I was living into that, that I am a girl. Even at the grocery store, people would treat me differently. Like, you know, that's more like harassment at the society level. Yeah, that's my mom. This is my friend. Uh, this is my brother. Was that the reason why you decided to leave? I, uh, more or less, yes, but the more, uh, more important was that uh, the, the death threat that we received, like both of me and my mother, both of us. Ali decided to come to Denmark because of the good human rights condition. It has been six months since she has filed her asylum application. During the process, she was assisted by LGBT Asylum, an NGO offering support to refugees like her. For me, the asylum experience was easy and I wouldn't say very easy, but I would say comfortable because of LGBT, because at every step LGBT is with me because they make phone calls, they send emails, they try and contact anyone and everywhere and explain it to them that these are the needs. And in every individual it comes differently. I look nice every day, sweet. Like Ali, up to hundreds of LGBT refugees are currently seeking asylum in Denmark. Many of them are living in refugee centers like these all over the country. Usually, they will have to go through a very lengthy process in their asylum application, and some may have to wait for years before they know whether their asylum application is accepted or rejected by the Danish authorities. So, some cases move very fast, and some cases move very slow. We tend to see that the LGBT cases move quite slow, when these people meet the Danish authorities, because the Danish authorities are not very capable and are not very good at uh, understanding and dealing with sexuality as a silo motive. There are both like uh, cultural uh, presumptions and prejudices that comes into play. So something will come up. I believe in that. So if either asylum or whatever. I might just get married to someone. I might find someone. Like, there are other ways. But the thing is, yes, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going back. I'm on it. I'm Eric. I'm Gaolong. I'm Danmark Gaolong. I'm 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 Gaolong. Please visit our website at jmsc.hku.hk. We also have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. 歡迎大家瀏覽我們的網頁 That's all for now. We hope this has been helpful. 
don't forget to head to our booth at Centennial Campus Room LGO8 to chat to some of our current JMSE students. Thanks, Faye. 今日嘅報道係咁多，歡迎大家去到我哋出邊 LG 零八嘅攤位，我哋同學位嗰度解答大家疑問㗎。拜拜。Bye bye Now we would like to invite Jeffrey Timmermans, our Director of the Bachelor of Journalism program, to outline the entrance requirements for our four-year program. Jeff, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for coming today. Uh, the Info Day for us at the JMSC faculty is, is a very, very special day. Uh, first of all, because we just kind of sit back and let the students do all the work. Um, it, it's just, you know, the, the entire production here today was produced, designed, written, and presented by the students. Uh, and it makes us tremendously proud for this opportunity to, to show them off uh, and their, their talent. Uh, it's just truly awe-inspiring what, what, what these guys can do. Um, I wanted to, to just reiterate a few things that Professor Chan said at the beginning. Our program is called the Bachelor of Journalism Program, but in some ways that's a bit of a, a misnomer, because our program is about far more than just journalism. And first of all, it's a double major program. So our students major in journalism and combine their study of journalism with another area of study. And that area of study is entirely their choice. We have students choosing a second major in economics, finance, uh, politics, psychology, sociology, criminology, music, arts. It's entirely up to them. And they combine both studies. And we also think about journalism in its broadest possible sense. We live in a very, very exciting age now. We live in an age of instant, global, digital communications. We live in an age where everybody, because of this magical device, has the potential to be a journalist. That doesn't mean they're going to be a good journalist. It doesn't mean they're going to be an ethical journalist. It doesn't mean they're going to be an accurate journalist. But we see these are the skills, accurate journalism, ethical journalism, that are now applicable to almost any career in the entire world, as Professor Chan said. And we see that in our graduates. Many of our graduates do go on to traditional journalism. We have graduates at, at Reuters, Bloomberg, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, South China Morning Post, RTHK, TVB. But many of our students go on to do something entirely different. We have students join the government as AOs. We have students going on to do a law degree and, and have a career in, in the law as solicitors and barristers. We have students going to do PhDs. We have students who go on to be educators. And the key thread here, the common theme to all of those careers, is that strong communication skills are essential. And that's what this program gives you. In fact, we like to think of our program as a communications-focused liberal arts degree for the digital age. And you can see what these guys can do. These are the skills that employers want. And these are the skills that you will learn at the Bachelor of Journalism program. So, how can you join our family? And we do like to think of ourselves as a family. Um, we are a, still a relatively small program. And we take students from the JUPA scheme, of course. But we also take a small number of students from the non jupa scheme, as well as students from, from overseas. We have a very international faculty. We have a very international student body. And that's very, very important to us. Uh, for the students, for the applicants, we'll be taking the DSE. Um, we, last year, we had um, a median score of 26. This is the best five score. So we look at your best five DSE subjects. And last year, our median score was 26. Now, that's a few points lower than it was the previous year, 
we see quite a bit of volatility in, in DSE scores, as, as a lot of other programs do, just because the DSE is still relatively new. Um, so don't worry too much about your DSE score. Uh, we don't really know what our median score will be this year. It will probably be different than last year. I, I, I really can't say. Uh, but if you are concerned about your DSE score, we encourage you to try to join the school principal's nomination scheme at your school. Uh, we, we, every year we take several uh, SPN school principal nominees, and they, they tend to be quite outstanding students. So we look very, very seriously, very carefully at the SPN scheme. So we encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, we also take uh, applicants from the IB programs, uh, both in local international schools as well as overseas schools. Uh, and uh, last year, well, again, we've got a little bit of volatility here, but if you score 36 or above in your IB, you're in pretty good shape. Right, I, can, I can tell you that. I, mean, I can't give you a, um, a minimum score, but if you've got 36 or above, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, for A-levels, we also take uh, A-levels applicants uh, and our median score and A levels last year was one A star, one A, and one B. All right. Now um, I want to stress that this year we will be interviewing every applicant because we look at test scores. We have to look at test scores. I'm sorry to say okay. we we've got to look at test scores, but we are more than about just test scores, okay. and we will be interviewing individually each applicant. Each non gpus applicant will be invited in for an individual interview, and every DSE applicant who puts our program as one of their top three choices, band A, will be invited in for an individual interview. So if you are coming in through the GPUS scheme, uh, it's very, very important for you to put us in band A and keep us there, otherwise you will not be invited in for an interview and you will not be considered for admission. Right. Now I'm happy to take more questions, but I'll leave that to the uh, end of the program because we've got some very, um, very, very talented graduates who are here to, to share their experiences with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. 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 This program. I feel the pressure because I see my junior schoolmates are doing so well, so I have to speak well. I don't want to you know, lose space. So uh, I graduated from this program uh, in April and then I uh, went into uh, journalism. I got a job at TVB Pearl as a producer reporter for this program called The Pearl Report. It's a documentary show. And on Monday at 9 p.m. on Monday, so um, so it's very easy to get a job okay, with this program. So I can guarantee you, you can easily get a job after graduation. So uh, I will switch okay, because I know you know some of you, um, you know, I will speak in Cantonese English. So come on, come on, Billy, Wang Sheng Kang. Come on, come on, four years of undergrad is journalism. Uh, second major is translation. I have a friend who second major. You can choose to translate it. Different students have different second major. It's okay. Then my second major is translation. Then after four years, I was added to TVB Pearl Broadcasting Television to do a documentary called Pearl Report, the Chinese producer reporter. I'm very proud of my work. I'm going to talk about two things. I'm in school to do something. 同埋我喺社會工作之後個體會係啲乜嘢。So in the following in a few minutes, I'll talk about what I did at school and what I, you know, any new insights I have into this industry as someone who is, you know, working, you know, as a journalist. So I'll talk about uh, my school time. Three years ago, I entered this uh, amazing family. Thank you, Jella. Thank you, Ying Chan, uh, Professor Ying Chan. They're very supportive. We have very, very supportive. Alumni network as well as you know the teaching staff, everyone is very supportive of you of your studies. So uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunities I have. I worked as uh, a freelancer for Bloomberg. I worked as an intern for Associated Press for CCTV because every summer I got something to do. I got some summer job as you know freelancer or intern. So I've worked in uh, CCTV in Beijing when I was. Uh, you know, in the summer of my uh, freshman year, actually. So my first year, uh, I worked at CTV in Beijing as an intern, and I worked as a freelancer at Bloomberg, and also an intern as Associate Press the next year. So I had a lot of job experience when I was, you know, studying here because of the great alumni network we have and the great support from 
our teachers and our uh, um, you know, friends because they're giving us so many opportunities that it's very easy for you to get part-time internship experience. And regarding exchange experience, I went on exchange to Cambridge University, uh, very thankfully with full scholarship, because you know, I know it's quite expensive to go overseas and study, but if you work hard, if you pay attention in class, if you do well, I'm sure you'll get scholarship, and I, I can guarantee that you'll get the financial support from your teachers, from the school as well. So, um, Hey, Gao 讀書和努力去上課就可以了 uh, uh, OK, moving on to my uh, uh, you know, job experience So right now I'm working as a producer reporter at TV Pearl It's a great experience because you know, I think being a journalist is a privilege because you've got to interview and meet people from different walks of life At, you know, I'm still 22 years old but I've interviewed some head of government and head of company because I'm a journalist so people you know, are willing to talk to you they would like to talk to you and hopefully be on TV, some of them think that. But you know, it's a privilege to be a journalist because you get to meet different people and learn new things every day. My first show was about fishermen, and then my current show is about tree management. So I meet people from these two areas, people that I would not have met if I you know, did not enter journalism. So I really, I'm very grateful for all the training and the learning I have uh, at JMSC. And lastly, I want to say, um, I think in this generation, if you do want to be a journalist, because you know I'm a journalist, so I would speak for my industry. Audrey is, is working at another industry, so she talked about maybe for, probably you know, another experience. So if you want to be a journalist, I think in this generation, it's not really about the distinction, because in the older generation, it's about, oh, your print, your TV, your radio. There's clear distinction between different streams. But I think in this generation, with technology and internet, it's about you know you have to be a versatile journalist. You need to be able to write, to speak on camera, to edit video, to have you know basic video editing skills, to become a good journalist. So this is something that the most this is the most precious thing I've learned from JMSC because our program is so versatile that it prepares our students to become you know versatile journalists to become you know uh, uh, to to excel in different streams. Gong也是小小,想更小小,say critically to critique different things. Um, so uh, thank you for coming and I hope you will join our talented uh, schoolmates and learn how to become you know, a critical thinker, how to become a, a leader in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Billy. Um, how cool was that drone? That was amazing. I, I wish I was still studying here so I could have, you know, played with that. Um, we didn't have that uh, when I was here. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Audrey. I'm from Russia. I graduated in May from this program. Um, and I just want to add to what Billy was saying in terms of 
our versatile program. So when I joined this degree, I think like a lot of people, I joined journalism because I was thinking, oh, I like writing, I'm good at writing, writing is my thing, you know, it's a creative thing, I'm just going to do this, I'm going to join journalism, I'm going to be a writer. And then when I joined the program and I saw like all the list of uh, courses that everyone has to do, radio, well, you don't have to do radio, but TV, um, you can do radio, you have to do all these classes, I realized, oh, hey, wait, actually, I love video a lot more. Well, that was just my personal experience. I just fell in love with the camera after our first TV class, and um, I decided, okay, you know what, I'm just going to try my best to explore this a little more. And so after my first year, I got an internship um, at Russia Today. This is a news channel in Russia, um, in the broadcast studio. And you know, being there uh, and where it was like broadcast live, talking to the anchors, it was very exciting. I'm uh, kind of jealous that you know <laughs> Billy gets to do this on a daily basis. Now being being in that environment, it's very exciting. It was very exciting for me. Um, and then I went. I personally went on exchange to France uh, because I, you know, I like French. I wanted to improve my French. And when I came back um, during the winter. I got an internship at uh, Agence France Presse, which is a French news agency, kind of like AP, but the, the French version. Um, and one thing I'd like to highlight about the JMSC is that you will, you, while you're here, you get access to an amazing pool of connections and uh, resources. So the JMSC has its own careers counseling. Uh, part that helps you develop your career, think about what you want to do, where you want to intern, and also you have access to some amazing, talented students. Well, not access, but you know, you all you all become <laughs> friends. <laughs> um, but you get this, you get to tap this network. So um, when while I was studying, we got a chance to do a, a class with some master students. Um, and while I was in that class, I you know. Obviously, was talking to each other, I found out that one of the master students did an internship at AFP previously, and so you know I I, I managed to ask him for uh, I asked him for the producer's name because you know not all this information is always very public, um, and through that I managed to apply for an internship, go through an interview <coughs> process, and then uh, get a winter internship there. And it was, uh, it was a really interesting experience because, again, that was very different. That's also video, but then you're working in a news agency and uh, for, for The Wire. So you're, you're working with, with video, but not really so much, not so much um, filming, but more editing, pr like producing and, and sending it out and things like that. So that, that was very interesting for me. Um, but I think the key, the, the key thing from, that I got from my experience in the JMSC is that with all this wealth of knowledge that you learn, you actually you don't know where you'll, you'll end up uh, working, you don't know where you'll end up going. Personally, um, thanks to JMSC careers uh, counselor uh, emails, I found out about a job opportunity at um, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, so now I'm working there in their corporate communications team. And it's, it's more, this role is more like PR for the bank. Um, which is kind of like being on the flip side of what I used to do in, in my internship experience with media, kind of like working with media, but not in media. It's, uh, it's a whole new uh, concept. It's a very different kind of job, um, but very interesting and also with its own nuances and a very steep learning curve. Um, and I know that I would not have been able to get here if I hadn't studied here. So I'm, I'm also very grateful to the JMSC family. I think this is the third year that um, I'm coming to these info days, and it's very cool to be here as a as a graduate this time. Fox 
<laughs> well, um, it, it's an informal interview. I mean, I, 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 it's, uh, we, we do invite uh, students in for an individual interview with one of our faculty members. Uh, it's nothing to be too concerned about. We just want to get to know you a bit better. Uh, we're not going to test you. We're not going to ask you any trick questions. We're just going to ask you, you know, why you're interested in our program. What do you hope to do with the program? Um, you know, what are your interests? What books have you read recently? Um, that's about it. We just want to get to know each applicant better because we feel it's important. Again, you know, we're going to be welcoming you in, into our family. Uh, so we want to know more about you. That's, that's about it. Uh, the interview will be conducted in May. For, for DSC applicants, the interview will be conducted in May, um, after, the, after the reshuffle and before the results are announced. How many DSEs are you? How many DSEs? Uh, who here is on uh, uh, the DSE scheme? Joker scheme? No. So fair enough. And then, and then, who's here on IB? My daughter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just just a reminder for the interview, um, you know, we we cannot obviously interview every applicant, every Jupus applicant who puts us as one of their choices. We were only going to be interviewing Jupus applicants that put us is as one of their band A choices. And of course we start from band A A1. Um, so you'll 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 need to put us in, in band A to, to have any any chance of Yes. Um, yeah I just had a question about the um, faculty and also the international students. Um, and also being bilingual too as well. My daughter doesn't speak Cantonese. I uh, understand that most or all of the instructions and the classes are going to be given in English. That's correct. That's correct. Right. And uh, she does. She's bilingual, Spanish and, and English too as well. And probably uh, she's looking forward now to work right here in Hong Kong, but also you know working in other parts of the world. Uh, what is the what are the chances for uh, people that graduate here and kind of take all their knowledge into a different uh, environment? It could be South America, it could be um, UK or any other part of the world. I so. mean, if, if if you have the language skills, you can go anywhere in the world. We have we have graduates literally all over the globe. Um, we have. Um, Student working for Twitter in Singapore. We have students working in North America. We have students uh, working in Europe. Um, you name it. You name it. Um, you know, all, all of our students are at least bilingual. Um, you know, most the majority are Cantonese and, and English bilingual. Um, most of our students also speak Mandarin. Uh, we have students speaking Russian, French, uh, German, uh, and, and Korean. And Korean and Korean, uh, Japanese. Um, and we also have faculty that speak. Uh, we don't have any Korean speakers on faculty, but we have Japanese speakers, we have Mandarin speakers, we have Hindu, Hindu speakers. Um, so it's 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 a it's a very you know, international place, uh, and this also means that our faculty have international connections. Um, I was a reporter with the, the Wall Street Journal before I came into academia, uh, both in North America and in Asia. We have a faculty who worked for uh, the, the Hindu newspaper in India, CNN. Uh, we have very global, global faculty uh, as well. We have connections. Just one more question. Um, uh, I understand it's a four-year program, right? Um, in case a student, since you're a very mobile family, um, and of course she's going to be away from the family when she goes to university, but um, what is the chance for a student to transfer to another university with the credits in the middle or not? finishing the whole program. Does that happen to students that some of the subjects or some of the can be validated in other universities or? I mean that's that's a difficult question because it's up to the the other university. Right. I mean, I, you know, HKU and our program is, is, is recognized globally. Right. Uh, but it, it really depends and, and I, we've never had a, a case like that where a student 
transfer it out. Right. So I, I really, I, I don't know. I okay. don't know. Thank um, you. You can ask questions in, in any language you like, it doesn't have to be in English. <laughs> 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 The medium of the instructions is in English. Um. Yeah, so I, I just did, to reiterate that all of our courses uh, are in, in English, uh, except for, for one course where we, we teach Chinese news writing. <laughs> 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 So, um, you know, all of our courses are in English, so a, a, a strong English language ability is, is pretty important uh, to, to, to join our program because we have, you know, pre, we expect you to, to, to hit the ground running. So uh, the minimum English score in the DSC is a three, but the fact is almost all of our successful DSE applicants have a score of five or above. Uh, in terms of uh, the split between uh, JUPIS and non-JUPIS, again, this varies every year. Uh, last year, I believe we had 14 uh, JUPIS out of 31. We're going to significantly increase that number this year. Right. So uh, it's a, a very difficult to say. We don't really know right now how many non-JUPIS, how many JUPIS students will take, because we want to see who, who applies. But, um, the, the majority will be Jewish uh, that's, that's all I can tell you. Yes. Do you interview uh, each and every band A um, uh, DS, uh, DS? Yes, we will. Everyone. So, so the interview lasts from May all the way um, to right before the results announced, right? Um, we don't have the, the set schedule, but yes, probably it will be. It will start in May. Uh, and it will, the, the interviews will conclude before the results are out. Yeah, uh, I just want to add that um, even though we teach everything in English, English is, is the language that we use, but our students graduated, they, they, some of them went, go to work in Chinese media, Chinese language media, because the skill you learn here are transferable. Right. And it do very well. Good I mean, for Sun Bo, King Jai Yap, for TVB, Yao Xin, and they're there. But sometimes they started in Chinese media and then they move on to English media. Or they go into English media and then went back to Chinese media. Okay? So the skill you learn here, like um, what Billy and Audrey said, is versatile and equip you uh, to prepare you for all kinds of things. Chinese and English. Thank you.